let's now move to the assessment of crop transpiration. Here we see how aqua crop calculates crop transpiration. The crop coefficient is proportional to the canopy cover. And since we have checked the canopy cover, we might be quite sure that also the crop coefficient is correct. First thing to check is the ET node, which is the reference evapotranspiration. FAO has developed a local climate estimator, which contains mean monthly ET node data from all over the world. What we need to do is to check if all ET node data is comparable to the mean monthly data for that location. If we need mean monthly data for a particular location, we run new log claim in the single pond mode. We can either select the location from the world map or specify its coordinates or select it from the list. Let's go to the world map. So let's say that we run simulations for the area of Foggia. Therefore, I'm going to zoom to Italy. And now I'm going to look for my field by eventually looking at the coordinates. So by clicking on the map, New Log Klim shows me the mean monthly data. This one is for temperature. Let me put it on days. Then I can see in blue the maximum temperature and in green the minimum temperature from January till December. If I click on the next tab sheet, potential evapotranspiration, new lock glim shows me the mean monthly ET node for that point, which is rather small in winter and in summer, it is about five millimeters per day. By looking here at the station information, I can find that the software integrated the data of those stations, the locations of these stations, the altitude, the distance from the point and the direction are given in the table. So after checking ET node, we do not need to check the proportional factor, neither the shape of the KS curve, since these are conservative crop parameters. However, we need to check the soil water balance. First, to solve maybe a mismatch in canopy cover, and secondly, to check the calculation of crop transpiration. First thing to check is the initial soil water content. We know that simulation of the soil water balance are very sensitive to the initial soil water content. Wrong estimates will affect the simulation of the canopy cover, transpiration, biomass production and yield. We have discussed options to estimate initial soil water content in previous training modules. Aquacrop consider several thresholds for leaf expansion growth, for stomatal closure and for early senescence. Now they can only work correctly if the size of the reservoir of the root zone is correct. Do we have the proper soil type that determines the storage capacity tau of my reservoir. Are there huge differences in soil horizons? Then we have to enter soil physical characteristics of the different horizons. The rooting depth also determines the size of my reservoir. Subsequently, we have to check the data for rainfall and for irrigation. Runoff is simulated by means of a curve number. Was that curve number properly selected? Also, the hydraulic conductivity in field surface practices affect the curve number. Capillary rise is estimated by considering the depth of the groundwater table. Aquacrop 
offer options to calibrate capillary rise. We can also measure the soil water content in the root zone, enter that data in aqua crop to check the simulation of the soil water content. Therefore, we collect samples for the different horizons and for each of the horizons, we calculate the equivalent depth of water. We do that for the different horizons and the sum of that water content in the different horizons gives us the water content in the root zone. That data is entered in aqua crop. To assess the simulated water content in aqua crop, we compare the measured water content in the root zone with the simulated water content in aqua crop. Also, the data for observed soil water content in the soil profile can be entered as field data. Therefore, I click here on field data to update the field data. First, I have to specify a first day, for example, the 1st of January for the year 2000. And then here I specify that at day 80, which corresponds with the 22nd of March, I have an observation of the soil water content. Now, I took samples at 30, 60 and 90 centimeters depth in the soil profile. And as such, I have sampled the root zone, which is 120 centimeters thick. That is specified here. And here I specify the soil water content, which was 300 millimeters at that day. And we had a standard deviation of 15 because we took many samples. The next sample was taken on day 100, which corresponds with the 9th of April. And the water content dropped to 250 millimeters. I can specify also here the standard deviation if I have enough samples. This is done for each day on which we have observations and then together eventually with CC and with dry above ground biomass, I can save that on disk. Once again, for the sake of the exercise, I'm not going to record that, but I'm going to download a default file which is already there. So by loading this file, I can now use the data in that file to evaluate my simulation. Therefore, I run my simulation. And since I have observed data, AquaCrop displays that button there. So by clicking on it, I can now use the data of the soil water content to evaluate my simulation. The blue shape gives me the simulated soil water content and the black dots are the observed data. So I can look at the statistics and once again I can use the statistical indicators to show me the goodness of fit between observed and simulated data. So in AquaCrop, we check the goodness of fit with the help of that statistical indicators. Now, if the observed water content in the root zone is above or below the simulated one, we might check the values for field capacity and wilting point as specified in the SOL file. Here we see an example where field capacity was not well selected. The simulated soil water content during a rainy period will be close to field capacity. However, if observed data is far above the simulated data, we know that field capacity is not well selected. So by adjusting the field capacity in the soil file and running the simulations again, then we can get a good match between observed and simulated soil water content. 
Similar, during a long dry period and in the absence of irrigation and or capillary rise, we know that the water content in the root zone is heading to wilting point. If observed data is far below the simulated data, then we know that the value of the permanent wilting point in the soil file is not correct. By adjusting that and running the simulations again, we might get a good match between observed and simulated water content.